Hello, my name is Dr Lizzie Bayman and I am one of the consultants with the Diabetes Out There team here in Tayside. This is a short presentation in which we're going to go through in more detail the use of some of the tools that we have to help you when making a choice about a mealtime insulin bolus. In particular, in this presentation, we're going to talk through the use of ready reckoners. If you haven't seen the previous presentation recorded by my colleague Susan Hunter entitled How to Calculate a Mealtime Bolus, then please watch that one before you move on to this one. The aims of this presentation are to take you through the three steps which you need when using Ready Reckoner charts to help decide upon a mealtime bolus. Firstly, we'll talk about how to use the insulin to carbohydrate ratio tables. Then we'll move on to the use of the sensitivity factor tables. And finally, we'll be doing some examples where we add the insulin dose for the carbohydrate to the insulin dose for correction to decide upon our total bolus dose. So after you have calculated the carbohydrate content of what you or your child is about to eat, the next step is to decide upon how much insulin needs to be administered to cover that carbohydrate. And we're going to talk about that now. This is an example of a ready reckoner table, and we can provide you with this on either paper or an electronic version. You can see that down the side is the label saying carbohydrate. So the side axis refers to the amount of carbohydrate that you or your child is about to eat. Across the top is the insulin to carbohydrate ratio. So that's where you would go to look for the ICR, which relates to that particular meal. So let's go through an example. So your child is going to eat 45 grams of carbs and has an ICR of nine. Therefore, you look down the side to where it says 45 grams and you look down from the top where it says 9. So if you read across from 45 grams to ICR of 9, you will see that the Ready Reckoner table advises you administer 5 units of insulin. So in this case, the dose of insulin to cover the carbohydrates would be 5 units. Here is another example of using the Ready Reckoner table. So in this case, the child is going to eat 85 grams of carbs and has an ICR of one unit for 12. So if you find 85 and you read across and then you find 12 and you read down, you will see that the insulin advice from the table is to administer seven units. So in this case, for a child eating 85 grams of carbs with an ICR of one unit for 12 grams, then we would advise that you give seven units of insulin. Let's look at one final example of using this Ready Reckoner table. So in this case, the child is going to eat 40 grams of carbohydrate and has an ICR of one unit for 25 grams. So as we've been practicing, you read across from 40 and down from 25 and the table advises a dose of insulin of 1.5 units. So the correct dose of insulin for this particular situation to cover the carbohydrate would be 1.5 units. The most important thing to remember when calculating a mealtime bolus is this sum. Insulin for carbohydrate plus insulin for correction equals total bolus dose. So we've gone over a few examples of how to decide upon a dose of insulin to cover the carbohydrate. And now we're going to move on to how to decide upon a dose of insulin to give as an extra correction dose if your child is above target prior to eating. A child's sensitivity factor is determined by their total daily dose of insulin. Ask one of the DOT team members to advise you about which sensitivity factor table that you should refer to for your child. Generally speaking, we would like you to refer to the same sensitivity factor table for all meals of the day. Here is an example of a sensitivity factor table, and in this case, the sensitivity factor is two, meaning that one unit of insulin would be expected to bring this individual's glucose reading down by two millimoles per litre. 
As you can see, on the left hand side of the table are a list of glucose readings, and on the right hand side of the table there is the suggested dose of insulin to be given as a correction. All of our sensitivity factor tables are designed to bring glucose down to a target value of 6. In this situation, let's say an individual has a glucose reading of 14.2 before they eat. So therefore, you must find 14.2 on the left hand side of the table and simply read across to see what the suggested correction dose would be. And in this situation, the suggested correction dose is 4 units. This table is for sensitivity factor 4. So let's do another example. This individual has a glucose reading before they eat of 10.5. And remember, the sensitivity factor tables are designed to bring glucose readings down to a target of 6. So find 10.5 on the left hand side of the table and simply read across to see that the suggested additional bolus dose of insulin to be added on would be 1 unit. In this final example, we're using a sensitivity factor 7 table. So once again, you can see that the glucose readings are on the left hand side of the table and the suggested additional insulin to be given for correction is on the right hand side. In this situation, let's say a child has a glucose reading of 7.7. .7. However, you can see that the lowest glucose reading on the left hand side, which would require a correction in this case, would be 9.5. If your child's glucose reading is lower, than the lowest reading on the left hand side of the table, then therefore no extra insulin would be advised. So in this case, no extra insulin would be given to this child for this particular meal. We're now going to go one step further and look at using the ready reckoner insulin to carbohydrate ratio tables and the sensitivity factor tables together in order to calculate a mealtime bolus. So in this example, Liam wakes up and has a glucose reading of 9.8. He's going to have a breakfast of 60 grams of carbs and his ICR for breakfast is one unit for six grams. He has an insulin sensitivity of two. So the first step is to decide upon a dose of insulin to cover the carbohydrate. So as we've practiced, you're going to read across from 60 grams and down from 6 grams and therefore the ready reckoner table would advise a dose of insulin of 10 units to cover the carbohydrate of Liam's breakfast. However, his glucose reading is a little bit above target. So therefore, because his sensitivity is 2, you would refer to the sensitivity factor 2 table and find 9.8 on the left hand side of the table and this advises an additional 1.5 units would be given to bring Liam's glucose down to a target value of 6. So 10 units for carbohydrate plus 1.5 units for correction equals a total bolus dose of 11.5 units. Here is our second worked example. So in this situation, Freya is going to have her lunch. She has a glucose reading before her lunch of 16.9. She has an insulin to carbohydrate ratio of one unit for 12 grams, and she is going to eat 70 grams of carbohydrate. Freya's insulin sensitivity is four. So as we've been practicing, the first thing to do is to read across from the carbohydrate content of her meal, which is 70 grams and down from her ICR of 12 and therefore the ready reckoner table would advise a bolus dose to cover carbs of 6 units. Once again Freya's glucose reading before eating is above target at 16.9 so we must refer to the sensitivity factor table to decide upon an extra dose of insulin to correct her down to a target of 6. So find 16.9 on the left hand side of the table and simply read across to see that the advised additional insulin in this case would be 2.5 units. So the total bolus dose for Freya's lunch would be 6 units for carbohydrate plus 2.5 units for correction, giving a total bolus dose of 8.5 units. In our final example, Caleb is about to eat his evening meal. He's going to eat 100 grams of carbs and he has an ICR of 1 unit for 18 grams. His glucose reading prior to eating is 5.6 millimoles per litre and he has a sensitivity factor of 2.
So as we've done many times now, we're going to look down the side axis of the ready reckoner and find 100 grams because he's going to eat a total of 100 grams of carbohydrate. Read across to Caleb's ICR of 18. So across from 100 and down from 18, you will see that the dose of insulin to cover the carbohydrates is 5.5 units. Caleb's glucose reading prior to eating is 5.6 millimoles per litre. This is within our target of having a glucose of between 4 and 7. Therefore, no extra insulin would be advised for Caleb's meal. So his total dose would be 5.5 units for the carbs plus zero units for correction, giving a total bolus dose of 5.5 units. I hope this slide looks familiar to you. These are the five steps required to decide upon an appropriate mealtime bolus of insulin. In this presentation, we have really focused on step two, which is deciding upon the appropriate dose to cover the carbohydrate content of the meal and step four, which is deciding upon a correction dose which is added to the dose for carbohydrates if your child's glucose reading is above target. So for the final time today, I would just like to leave you with the message that insulin for carbohydrate plus insulin for correction equals total bolus dose. I hope that you found the content of this presentation helpful. If you think that you or your child or your child's school would benefit from the use of the Ready Reckoner tables or the Sensitivity Factor tables, then you can either access these on the DOT website via the DOT app or a member of the DOT team would be very happy to provide these for you either by email or on paper. Just let us know. Thank you very much.